If you're having trouble with Excel freezing, crashing, or taking a really long time when you're deleting filtered rows, then you're in the right spot. In this video, I'm going to explain why this happens, how to fix it, and also share a bunch of other tips and techniques for filtering and sorting your data. All right, so I'll first give a demo of this issue of deleting filtered rows in case you haven't experienced it yet. I'll then walk through a technique uh, to solve the problem and also explain why it happens. So in this example here, I have a data set that has 10,000 rows in it. And let's say we want to delete all of the rows where the color is equal to red. So of course, the first thing we do there is filter this table. So we'll just go ahead and filter for red only, hit OK. That'll show us all of our rows, again, where the color equals red. Next, I want to delete all of those rows. So to do that, I'm going to hit Control A on the keyboard to select all the rows in the table. Then right click anywhere, go to delete and entire sheet row. Keyboard shortcut is control minus. And when we do this, it's going to take Excel a bit of time here to delete all of these rows, probably about 10 seconds or so. You see Excel goes into not responding mode there, which can always be a bit scary. And then it finally deletes the rows. And of course, that's that amount of time will depend on the data set and the complexity of the uh, workbook and things like that. But now we can clear that filter and we have all of our rows. So how can we speed that up? Well, one technique is to sort the data first. And on this sheet here, I have the same exact data set, again, with 10,000 rows in it. And the first thing we're going to do is sort. So we're going to sort by the color because that's the uh, condition or the filter that, that we're filtering for, the column that we're filtering for. So we're first going to sort. And you can sort A to Z or Z to A. It doesn't matter. Essentially, we want to get all those rows into one block, all the red rows. And so now we're going to filter. We'll go ahead and apply the same filter now. And again, same technique, control A, right click, delete entire sheet row. If you have any other techniques for uh, deleting rows, entire rows in a table, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. There's a lot of different ways to go about it. So uh, leave a comment below with that. But now that we have this here, I'm gonna hit delete entire sheet row and you can see the rows are deleted instantly. So, uh, and of course we'll just clear that filter again so we can see the rest of our data. So the reason this happens is because of that grouping when we sort the data. So I'll go over to this uh, sheet here, which, which again has the same data set to just kind of explain this so you understand what's happening. So if I just uh, filter this again for red and, and these are rows are not sorted, as you can see here, we have some non-contiguous ranges or what Excel calls areas. Uh, essentially here we have row three that's visible, row six, row 12, and so on. And we have hidden rows between that that have been filtered out because they contain a different color name. When we delete all of these rows as they are right now, Excel has to go through the rows individually and delete them one by one. And then it might have to recalculate, uh, restructure the references to make sure everything that might be pointing to this table is pointing to the correct uh, cells now and things like that. So it takes some time to delete an individual row or an area, then restructure the spreadsheet and delete the next one and go through, in this case, there's over 2000 areas. These are called areas because sometimes there are contiguous ranges like you see here, 43 and 44 together, 35, 36, 37. So Excel would delete all of these rows at one time and then move on to the next row. So when we sort first, and we'll just go ahead and clear the filter now, when we sort first, so again, I'll sort, then filter for red only, all of our rows here for red are in one contiguous range. So Excel only has to delete one area here, then restructure the spreadsheet one time. It doesn't have to do that over 2000 times. So I now want to show a trick for retaining your original sort order because you might be saying, John, this is great, but I don't want to lose the uh, order that my data was originally in when I sort it. So in order to do that, we can add what's called an index column. So right over here to the right of the table, I'm going to type a one in the first row. I'm going to type a two in the second row. I'll then select both of these cells, uh, hover over the fill handle here in the bottom right corner and just double left click. And that's going to fill down this sequential list of numbers. Now there's a lot of different ways to do this in Excel. So if you have another technique for this, uh, feel free to leave a comment uh, below this video. But essentially what we want here is a column of static values. So we do not want to use a formula for this 
because those uh, numbers could change. We want a column of static values. And again, this is typically referred to as an index column. So we'll just rename that if I can type. Okay, so now that we have our index column, we're essentially going to do the same process. Now we can go ahead and sort the color column. We'll sort it A to Z to get them all in the right order here. And then uh, we'll filter. So go ahead and filter. And then we can uh, select all the cells there. Sorry, I hit the wrong uh, shortcut. Select all the cells. Uh, right click and delete entire sheet row. Again, those will instantly be deleted. We can clear to see all of our data again. And now to get the data in the original sort order, we can just sort the index column. So we'll sort it largest, I'm sorry, smallest to largest, A to Z, smallest to largest. And that's going to put our data back in the original sort order, of course, minus all the rows that had red as the color. So you'll see some gaps here uh, in the numbers, but this is going to get us back to the original sort order. And finally, for all my fellow geeks out there, I wanna show you how to figure out how many areas are in the filtered range. By the way, if you are one of those geeks, uh, hit the like button below and let me know. Okay, so here we have our original data set with 10,000 rows, it is not sorted. And the first thing I'm going to do is just filter this for red again. And then we'll hit Control A here to select all of the cells. At the beginning of the video, I said there's over 2000 areas here uh, in this filtered range. And the way I figured that out is if we go to the developer tab and then hit the visual basic button, keyboard shortcut is Alt F11. That'll open up the VB editor. And down here in the immediate window, if you don't see the immediate window, hit Control G on the keyboard we're going to put in this line of code. And I'll put this in the description below the video so you can just paste this in. But essentially this line of code is going to count the number of areas in the visible cells that are selected. That's what that does here. Again, we have all those cells over here selected and that's the visible cells. And we're gonna uh, put a question mark at the beginning of that. And then once we uh, put the text cursor out here at the end and hit enter, that's going to run that line of code and return the count, which as you can see is 2,197. So again, when we delete these unsorted uh, filtered rows, Excel is going to have to go through area by area and do the deletion 2,197 times. Now, if we were to sort the data first, and then filter it, that's going to just create one area. So if you were to run this line of code again be, uh, after sorting it, this would return a one instead of 2,197. And again, Excel just has to do that deletion one time. So that's what makes it so much uh, faster. So I hope these tips have helped you. Of course, if you have any other techniques or suggestions here, feel free to leave a comment below as well. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.